bucket list, you mentioned the Founding Fathers. Have either one of you been to the Founding Fathers Monument? No, I have not. It, it is set in stone, mm -hmm. what has gotten us here today. Mm -hmm. you, you guys need to go there. You, you need to grab a bunch of other your constituents and drag them along. You really need to go there and see this place. Mm -hmm. Not place, this it's about, monument. It's about a mile up the road. Don't go to see this rock. Mayflower. Don't go see that stupid rock that has 1621. Go see the Founding Fathers Monument. I would love to do that, but I would, what I will tell you is that I, I've read a lot and I, I've learned a lot along the way. I believe our Founding Fathers believed that the government should be very small. Very, very small. I didn't even open up my fingers. So I agree with the concept and the principle. I, 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 and I know that it is. And I will set up a government for anarchy, for good men to stand up and take shit. Correct. And I, and, and I don't disagree with you. I believe that government should be almost, you know, unseen in your life. But that's not where we're, we're at right now. And I'm up there fighting for you. And I would love to go there. I can promise you, though, that I don't need to go there to know the principles of freedom of, our, of what our government was supposed to do. No, 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 but I just want you to know that I am with you and I'm fighting for you. Um, and, and you know what? I know that I, and I believe you, but I want to know what we can do because our country is out of control. Nothing is right anymore. The laws are being followed. This is what I would say to you. The youth are being um, corrupted in the schools. Get involved in your board of education. Right now we have the critical race theory that's a big, huge curriculum that's being shoved down the throats of every BOE in the state of Connecticut. Get involved. Be there. Be a voice for your kids. Our children, our children are being brainwashed, brainwashed by, by many of these concepts that just aren't true. There's no facts that support them, none. Get involved, be a voice, get involved in your local, your local government. Um, know your representatives, obviously you're here, talk to us. You know, have conversations with a lot of the people around you, your neighbors, your youth. The youth are being so impressed right now with, you know, that, that America is bad. We're the freest country in the world. We're the freest country in the world. And they're being told that we're bad. And so do we get it right all the time? No, we don't. No, we don't. But you see what I'm saying? They're being brainwashed. I went to the Board of Education <coughs> at, at Brooklyn Elementary School last night. And if there were 20 people there, we were lucky, OK? And still, these mothers went up there and said, oh, keep the masks on the kids. And as soon as the vaccines for kids are available, we're, we're going to be first in line. And I just cringe because everyone's brainwashed. So think about this. You said there was 20 people there. Can you get 12 people there that make up the majority that agree with you? Round them up and bring them to the meeting and let them be the stronger voice, right? Because really, we sit back and we're very complacent here. We let things happen. You know, many of us who are freedom lovers and don't want the government in our lives, we just sit, we go home, and we work, and we have our coffee, and we go home, and we have our dinner. We don't want, we don't want the government in our lives, and I get it. But that's not what we, that's not the reality we live in. You need to get involved. You need to make your voice heard. You need to get your friends to join you. And you need to go to these meetings and speak up. I, I certainly echo that. And you know, to speak to our young people, you know, they, they're, they're searching, they're looking for answers, they want to be involved. I can't tell you how many youth. Let's give them a party then. A big, giant party, conference, live band. Let's do it, Bruce. I got my grand. Anybody match me? Oh, let's do it. Well, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, well, the, the, the party they're looking for, they, they want to have a party of the answers. They want, they're, they're, they're looking for, excuse me, excuse me, let me, let me finish up. Um, they're, they're, they're looking, I, I, there, was a, there was a young lady, 16 years old, um, that interviewed me for a high school project. And she, uh, she it was an over two hour interview. Very, very, I, I think, outstanding questions about what a legislator should do, what we do. Uh, how our voice, how their voice becomes uh, our voice. Very, very uh, uh, scholarly uh, questions. Um, the, the, uh, we have some very smart kids with some very, very good ideas. We de definitely need to guide them, no doubt about it. Uh, uh, we reach out to the generation, I tell you, younger generations, um, our, our, our teenagers. Talk to 
the, the seniors. Talk to those people in their uh, 70s, in their 80s, in 90s. The, these people have experienced and lived a lot of life. I remember Kevin, we, we uh, were at the uh, BFW, the, the gentleman who was a survivor of Pearl Harbor was there. He was, he was 98 years old. And what do we do to our elderly? We lock them in convalescent homes under the COVID laws where then they're abused, they're not being properly taken care of, the families are restricted, and we just continue to say that people are responsible. Our voices are shut out of Hartford. Our voices have been shut down the Board of Education meetings. I know, I've had it happen. And I've been very involved, and it still hasn't changed a thing. So, what else? What else? I mean, talk to our seniors. Sure, they're going to give lots of words of wisdom, but they're terrified of what their future outcomes. The DOJ is refusing to even investigate what took place in New York, and we had more deaths in our convalescent homes in Connecticut than New York did. What's being done in Hartford about that? We're tired. We, we, we get it, Naomi. And no, and no we, I don't think you guys are getting it. We do get it. We're just in the minority. We're fighting as we're fighting like hell for you. We're doing it at every curve. We've coddled and out to the teachers unions for years up in the halls of Hartford. I'm not saying you specifically, but that's what's going on. Large pensions that have just about bankrupted the state of Connecticut. What are our little voices that local board of education is going to do against state board of eds and the teachers unions up in Hartford and all of the money? Well, some of us are educated. Some of us have been involved, and we still don't see transparency. We still don't see change. I think part of the problem with, the, with this executive power that's gone on for so long is unilateral controls during this whole COVID event. I get it the first 30 or 60 days, but here we are. Where the hell we're going on a year and a half. We just we just we just ceded our power again. Again, when I say yes. us collectively, me and him voted against it. We're again, it's given the governor authority now through I believe it's September 18th to, he can continue to do whatever he wants to do, issue any kind of executive order that he wants to issue. And you're right, we have been uh, we have been shut out. We've been have we have been put in the hall. Yeah, these are mandates, they're not laws. So I don't have to wear a mask if I choose not. You can do whatever you want. I, I, I can't speak to that, what, what the circumstances would be, but, but you know, that's how you, that's how you stand up to your government. You, you, you know, you make a statement, you do what you, what you feel is right for you. I can't tell you what to do, but, um, you know, I, I can stand by you and I can agree with you, but you are going to have to make those choices and get people to join with you and stand up. I mean, we've seen that for decades with regard to protests of the Vietnam War and all of the things that have happened, it's people coming together and standing up and saying, we're not taking it anymore. So join, you know, join other like-minded individuals and stand Chris, up. Because Facebook shuts you down, Twitter well, shuts you down, there is no way to get a message. But, once, but they, they are, are and they're doing, with, with, um, they're doing it in ways with, with, they're doing it in ways with coding um, language and how they're doing it. I, I don't disagree with you, but I don't have control over Facebook. Right. No, they no, shut no, down no, the president of the either. United States. Really? I mean, they shut him down completely. Like, mm -hmm. is freedom of speech? What happens to that? Mm -hmm. So you guys are seeing the degradation of what's going on across the country with regard to, um, you know, really a, an attack on our constitution and what and our freedoms that we were afforded by people who died. They died for our country. They died for these freedoms. Imagine you going up and stepping up and giving up your life so that your family could have freedom. And That's what these people did. The Declaration of Independence lost everything. They lost everything. And so we, you know, we need to be willing to do that. As sad as it is, we need to be willing to stand up and say we've had enough. We're not doing it anymore. I think they lost everything but their country. You know, the um, look at what they what they did for the generation after generation. And the, 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 prob the problem is with the, uh, what we're having here. I, I don't understand this one man control, one person control, one, one, one branch of government running the show here. We're able to go in on the House floor to erode parental rights, um, uh, uh, add additional uh, uh, financial burdens on you for food and clothes and by the, the, this, this, tax, uh, uh, this tax on trucks, but yet we can't, uh, 
we open, we don't have the ability yet to go in to say, yeah, we're going to, uh, to, to say yes or no to these mandates that the governor wants to put on local places, local towns like Plainfield and Griswold and Sterling, Killingly. Uh, we can't say yes or no to that. So what the what the mask mandate will look like, what, what kind of a will be in-person learning, will be remote. Uh, we're not, we can't have a say on that. We can we, we can go into to, uh, pass this horrible agenda. It, it, do, it doesn't it doesn't make sense. It just simply doesn't make sense. And uh, somebody's hand was up. Yes. Yeah, I just wanted to say that these guys here, I have watched them for three years. Live, fight for us. I'm conservative, okay, so I look, they have done an excellent job. There's only 18 <coughs> on the conservative uh, of the Republicans, and they're in the minority. The Republicans are in the minority, so that's why they're stuck. That's part of it. It even got worse the last election. They lost House and Senate, and uh, that's what we need to build up, because they have no the Democratic governor is really following the Democratic president. It, that's how it is working. Okay. So whether you agree with me or not, this is what is going on. Your, your municipal races are coming up this fall, and each and every one of you should know every single person that's running, and you should participate in helping them run um, if they're standing by your values and your morals and, and your, 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 you know, where you stand. Get involved. That's what you need to do. People, people have become complacent. They are out there reaching out. I'm telling you right now, they're asking for help. Money, usually. You Just that's reach out to me. Send me some money. Okay. They need, well, it, unfortunately, that's... No money straight, but, but reach out to me and I can connect you to anybody. But I, I'm, I'm imploring you all to do that because that's what it takes. Um, I can tell you, I've, this is my third term, and I know it's um, Rep. Lanou's second. And oftentimes, you know, when the rubber meets the road, you know, not everybody comes in, comes through for you. And we need the help. If you want us to represent you, if you don't, that's okay. But if you want us to represent you and you agree with our values and our fight for freedom, then help us out. And, and help the others that are that are working for you as well. Also, don't be afraid to talk to people. Talk to friends and relatives, people you know in other parts of the state, other districts, other areas. Uh, speak to them, just like what we're doing here, just what you're saying to us. Talk to those people. Talk to them. Don't be afraid. If somebody you don't agree with, don't be afraid to speak to people that may have a different, even a philosophy. Bring them around to your way of thinking. Let people know exactly what's going on with a lot of these bills that we outlined for you that's, that were voted on and offered. Have them ask their representatives as well. How did you vote on this stuff? How did you vote on people with our rights? How did you vote on SB2? How did you vote on the, uh, on the tax on, the, on trucks? Uh, ask them that. Um, and um, keep them honest. Ask them about the, the marijuana bill about picking winners and losers. How it's going to shut a bunch of people out. How did you vote on that? Why do you think that was a? Do you think that? How did how did that language get written that way? And um, hold, and have them hold their representatives to beat the fire. Is there any way that, uh, or how can we um, have our election audited like We have people that are doing that right now through the state and working on that. And we didn't. I don't know, um, Brian. I didn't hear. I, you did a really good job. I may have missed. Did you talk about anything about the elections and the voting and some of the bills that passed with regard to that? The so, so there were several bills. One of my very good friends, um, Representative Master Francesco, is ranking on on the um, GAE, which is um, which handles all the election laws. And um, with all of the expansion of ability to vote, which I wasn't necessarily in disagreement with, we really wanted to have integrity of the vote. That's that's for me the biggest, most important thing, right? I, I want everybody to vote, but we want integrity of the vote. We don't want the same person getting six or eight or ten votes. We don't want people that aren't qualified to vote to vote. We don't want that going on. We don't want people that are confused and don't understand who they're voting for to be signing on the red line and their, their ballot to be put in. We don't want that. So with that, with that said, we really, really put in a lot of amendments and, and um, alternatives to, if you will, allowing the expansion, but keeping the integrity of the vote. 
And every single one that we did was turned down. Every single one. And remember, when I say so turned down, what's that? The lady takes out the But what I'm saying to you is, what I'm saying to you is that um, we want we want integrity of the vote. And we want everybody to be able to vote. And we want to make it easy for people to vote. But that is not what the narrative was this year at all. It wasn't. It wasn't about showing an ID, having signature verification, which is are the two things that I was really very strongly believed. We even offered um, this, that the state would cover a free ID. The state would cover a free ID for anybody who wanted an ID. So we offered many alternatives and they were all passed by, but that's really where I stand is voter integrity. We wanted the integrity of the vote. But so many Americans don't even believe that anymore. They don't because of what we've seen happen. We, we in Connecticut and every other state, we know that there's, um, that that's been challenged, right? We know that we've, especially this last year when the, uh, the applications were actually sent to everybody, which in my opinion was a, was a travesty. It costs hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions of dollars, to have everybody sent, and they were, some of people were sent five and six applications. Um, people were sent applications for people in nursing homes so the staff could go literally get them to sign their name, and they, I think to your point, Bruce, the harvesting, that went on. Those are all things that are wrong. And you know, we have such great opportunity in Connecticut across the nation to get a ballot. You simply have to call your town hall and they'll mail you one. It is not hard. You don't have to leave your house to participate in voting. Um, but, but clearly there was an agenda and a push to run amok, if you will, the, what happened with the integrity of the vote. So again, you know, we're, 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 we're your voice, but we're not in the majority. We're fighting. And until we get the majority, it's going to be very difficult. So is the state auditing the vote? We have, we have private people auditing because we don't, the state can audit all they want. We want an outside person doing that. We have a group of people. Um, it's the voter fraud group. You can go online and look for them. They have been working very hard. They're all volunteers. They've been in every town across the state and they're finding fraud in every, every town across the state. Let me, let me just, if I just want to um, just add real quick to the, uh, you know, the early voting and the excuse absentee voting. Um, certainly, I want, I want to encourage, I want to give everybody accessibility to vote. And, uh, so, that's over, over 18, that's um, people who vote, we want them to vote. Um, but I want to make sure that the, uh, we've got to be careful for unintended consequences. For example, early voting, you know, it sound, sounds good, but just to show you, when I first ran, in 2018, I was able to knock over 5,000 doors. Go to have 5,000 families that could go to their front porch and have that conversation. And I believe had a similar experience when she first ran. And I was able to do it again in 2020. But here's the difference. In 18, so literally from July to election day, nearly election day, I got to go and talk to every single person, uh, 5,000 families that I had that direct one-on-one -on -one discussion with. I, I was able to do that. Uh, in 2020, as I was not indoors, when we started getting into September and October, a lot of people already said, I already voted. And um, they actually had voted the other way. And they said, had I talked to you, I probably would have voted for it. They took a sign, saying, no, they're, being, they're, they're legit. And they said, we would have voted for it. So it's showing with if it, when, when there's some of the unintended consequences here, people who are voting early, they have to be able to go early, that ballot's already cast. Right? So that's gonna that's gonna take away from that one-on-one -on -one retail politics, that one-on-one -on -one accessibility. It's gonna go more towards mass mailings and mass advertising and not have the ability to talk to one-on-one -on -one with the voters. Who's who loses on that? Who's who, uh, who loses that most? You guys. So that was my that was my big concern with um, with those bills and uh, that, uh, that that push. That was the biggest concern. I had is taking away from the retail politics and the lesser funded candidates. Let me make an act of like, you or Ann expound more on this uniform parentage act that's in this paperwork? Uh, I think that was a bill, I think that was a bill simply 
mostly on paperwork uh, bureaucracy. Apparently, um, individuals that were, uh, as I understand if I remember correctly, was basically surrounded by um, individuals who wanted to be a family and have that go through the court system. It was being held up, held up, held up, so that was what that parentage act was, as I am, as I recall. Any questions, any specific questions? Go ahead, Kevin. Uh, first of all, thank you both for coming. I did have a couple of questions that were related directly to towns and municipalities. One of them, and it was Brian that actually brought it up. At the beginning of your session, when you all got sworn in and you got voted to run business by way of Zoom, it definitely impacted what could and couldn't be done. It's exactly what you said, Brian. People didn't get a chance to go in, in person, and, and uh, voice their opinion. Instead, it was a 24-hour window for almost every bill. Now, I was on one for land use reform, which was horrible. Mm -hmm. I remember. It was horrible because what they were doing for that was they were allowing certain people to get on a list to speak. I was on a list, and after some 200 some odd people spoke, and legislators going back and forth and allowed to rebut, by the time you get to the 24-hour window, you had about 180 people that didn't get a chance at all. And I don't know, but uh, it's something that failed. And I think I'm hoping and praying that this January coming up, that it's not going to be a continuation of that process. Because yeah. Zoom did not help at all. So uh, what I will say is that I liked Zoom for the fact that I think that we heard from people who wouldn't normally be able to get to Hartford, whether it be because they didn't have a ride, or they work schedules, or family, or whatever. But to Kevin's point, there was a lot of downside to it too. So as much as I liked what it did, you know, if we're cutting off the voice of the people, if we had let it continue to go, I think that's where it would have been really successful. All of you can speak. We will, I was willing to stay, I know with the 24 hour um, public hearing on the public health committee with regard to medical freedom, we were all, we had stayed at the very beginning, we'll stay here for days and listen to every single one of your voices be heard. They determined that it was going to be 24 hours, so I think that speaks to where Kevin was going. Um, when we did have the meetings up in Hartford, they were much less individuals were signing up, and I think because of limitations of maybe being able to get there, work schedules, children, whatever. Um, but I, I don't think that we would be doing that again, but who knows? I mean, we, we have a governor who has complete authority, complete authority to call every shot that's going on up in Hartford. So again, he could say, well, you know, the variant's coming out, or, you know, we're, we're concerned, or we don't want people to come into the, to your house. It's your house. We don't want you to come to your house. And, and he has that authority to do that. So I don't know. I can't answer your question. Uh, one other question that I have was uh, recreational cannabis. And was there any discussion on the floor to either table or bring forth a committee to discuss ideas and get it all hashed out before they came to vote on the financial bill? It's like putting the cart before the horse, and that's what we've seen. Um, Art and I went to, uh, we went to the CCM uh, workshop, and one of those workshops was specifically on cannabis, and we talked about uh, representatives from Colorado and Massachusetts and how their representatives failed their states because they didn't think it through first. And I was wondering if that was something that was discussed. So I'll, I'll speak and then I'll, and then of course, um, Reckland and chime in. But that bill was 300 pages. 300 pages of just stuff with you must do this, you must do that, and only you can do that, and it was about picking winners and losers. It had so many flaws in it. There were dozens and dozens of flaws in that bill. And one of the things that we did propose is that, let's just take a breath here. We know that most of the people in the state of Connecticut do want to see it legalized, which is, you know, based on all studies, that is the, that is the fact. Let's get it right. Let's stop passing bills Let's like like stop saying these it's wrong, but we'll get it, we'll pass it, we'll fix it later. We need to stop doing that. There are so many things that are wrong with it, and I think to um, you know Selectman Cunningham's point, 
there were, there's so many things that are so wrong that need to be looked at. We did propose that. We proposed that we have a commission that look at that, come together and say, okay, this worked here, this worked there, this might not work in Connecticut, this might work here. Let's get it right, but there, that's, not what, that's not what they wanted. They wanted to pass it at any cost. So I'll let you, you know, go ahead and, and chime in. Yeah, I think you said it perfectly, yeah. Just to, you know, to add on, now it's going to be regular, it's going to be regulated by this, what's it called, a social equity council of 15 elected people, right? And uh, now who's, let's talk about who's not on council. We're not going to have anybody from DMS or the mental health uh, community. We're not going to have anybody from state police or public safety. And we're not going to have anybody from public health. Um, Three areas, right, three wheelhouses where this has a lot to do with, they're, uh, we're not going to have those people on there. Uh, to go, speak to your point, Kevin, to hash this out, to get this right, I think those three uh, communities would have a lot to say to try to get this right. And um, we, we tried to rectify some of it through floor amendments, and again, just they, they did a uh, vote of the down party line, and just sort of was a uh, Republican amendment, Republican proponents, and they, they vote against it, not even looking at the, the, the merits of it. So, I agree. It's a thing. They just uh, three, this 300-page uh, bill. I call it a 300-page monstrosity that we, none of us really had the ability to really read in depth before we were expected to vote on it. And then they uh, they changed it yet again before we went into special for it. So it's just it's 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 very very troubling. And uh, there, there was actually one one section in there that uh, there was a there was a person who was a former uh, uh, manufacturer of. Um, Marijuana in that business, that it was a carve out for them where they, they all essentially get awarded a license without having to go through the licensing process. Again, the whole cronyism, picking winners and losers. Ma'am, I associate your patient had been up for a while. Well, Linda, Hi, I'm Linda Fedor. I live in Central Village. Um, you specifically, Brian, said disproportionately affected areas. What, what, is, that? what is that? Uh, I think it's going to be. I think it's more of the, um, the more of the urban, bigger, uh, larger cities, those areas. But I'm still trying to get uh, an exact uh, definition myself. So if somebody wanted to uh, grow pot up in Killingly, and no, forget that they're going to go to New Haven. Well, well they've set it up, I think, Brian. Right. As, right. We, as from what we're understanding from the bill. Through 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 the permits. So the, the licensing. Who gets the licenses? Who gets the preferential treatment. Right. So. Uh, so again, think about this, uh, uh, billionaires like Larry Ellison uh, or Harold Schultz, who grew up in, uh, in their childhood, nine of their 18 years, yeah. they're going to, they would get a license preference over you, over me, over many, the majority of people in our districts, because uh, that's where they grew up. So it's still um, not me. And, and the, the, other, uh, the, the other thing to understand too, think about this, so, if, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm a large company, if I'm a large either manufacturer, grower, transporter, right, right I, I got that in place. I'm going to simply find somebody who is in that, that's from uh, the, this area that meets that, well, that uh, qualification uh, and take them on as a partner. Use them as a silent. I give them a part of the, uh, the business and uh, get, my, uh, get my lessons in that way. So, no. So, no, let's, let's be really clear about that, okay? It's federally illegal, federally illegal to participate in any, any kind of marijuana. It's federally legal. Um, the bill that um, I proposed with other legislators was to take the prohibition off of marijuana in the state of Connecticut for anybody 21 and over. Right. So what that means is that the law enforcement in Connecticut would not be um, you know, holding you accountable for that if you were 21 and older. But if, if a federal agent were here and wanted to, you know, uh, arrest you, they could. It's federally illegal. So we did not make cannabis legal. Um, we really just took the prohibition off of it. So I think that's another misnomer that people don't understand. So if it was legal, which you say it was, how would that work with going to work? Not, not going to work higher right? Well, that's a good question. So those were things that were missing that were, were you know, they, they said, oh, well, we'll figure that out later. We'll figure that out later. We'll figure that out later. So I think to Kevin's point, we'll figure that out later. There, there were, 
it was it was uh, it was it was not really very well thought out, and nobody seemed to care. It didn't seem to matter. The other thing that happens in Hartford a lot is that the legislature will pass bills, and we will uh, uh, allow a commission to run something, whether it's. Um, I know in our in our the town of Killingly, like with regard to power plants across the, the state um, in um, the New England um, energy, right? There's a commission that makes all those decisions with the colleges. There's a commission that is appointed, and and so it 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 goes from the legislator voting on the bill, and we literally almost don't see it ever again. The commission is assigned by the governor. And from that day on, this unelected group of people will make every decision with regard to whatever that topic or issue is. And that's what's going to happen with marijuana. How many I, people on the other side of this table, up in Hartford, that voted on the cannabis bill, were born in disproportionate areas to have a personal investment or a family investment in growing marijuana? Absolutely. How many? Oh, I don't know how many. I know that there were many that spoke out with regard to that. Many of them had um, family members that were um, in trouble with the law, that they wanted that erased, and they wanted them to be able to now participate in the selling of it. There was, the, again, when I think when, when Representative Lanou talked about winners and losers, it was, it was so clear. I mean, it was kind of like when the Staten family was donating to UConn and promoting all of the opioids, the oxys, and giving it to the doctors, and they were getting vacations and kickbacks, and Blumenthal and Murphy took big money mm -hmm. for the staffers for their campaigns, mm -hmm. big money. And you know what they said? Well, we donated it. We donated it back. And mm -hmm. now we have the opioid crisis. So what will happen here, Brian, to answer your question, is in five years when the mess is created, we'll start playing cleanup after we destroy hundreds of people in Connecticut. Yeah. That's what happens. Yeah. And that's the there is no pre-thought, it's cleanup. Correct. Like, they need billions. That's what happens. Um, agreed. And what Ann said it right when she said, um, it, that was an exact quote, oh, we'll, we'll figure it out later. We'll figure it out later. But we'll fix it later. Oh. That's, that's literally an exact quote. Um, I'll, I'll just pivot back real quick to the, the truck tax, that the, the, the truck tax that they're imposing on, on the trucking industry, right? Um, I, I was asking the proponent of the bill several questions. On the House floor, and that, that was that. That's the chairman of the, uh, the finance committee, who was the committee of cognizance that rolled this bill out. I asked him point blank. I said, um, "These, um, how onerous is the form going to be? To that uh, the, uh, the the truck companies going to have to fill out every month? Um, and that's going to be up to uh, the Department of Revenue Services Commissioner. Now, if, if, if it's a, if there's a problem with it, they'll fix it later." Um, I, I use the, the example, if you're a, uh, some kind of precision company in our state that has very precise perci uh, precision type um, um, machines, right? And let's say the, the machine, you need that machine to uh, get your orders done, and it's out, of the, it's out of the Midwest, and that company has their own trucks. You need a permit in order to tr transport it to Connecticut. Uh, you need that quickly. How long is it going to take to get that, uh, the out-of-state trucking company? to deliver that machine into the state so this company can keep running. How long is that permitting going to take? We don't know if it's a problem, we'll fix it later. We don't know. So literally, this, this could be something that could bring certain industries to, the, to our knees in our state, could, 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 could cripple our industry. And we don't, we don't have the answers, but we're going to pass it anyways and uh, fix it later. And that's... Yeah. Are they going to accept uh, the farmers? They talked about that. We don't, we don't, we're not sure. That, that was, that's going to probably be up to the commission, but that was brought up. That was, uh, uh, you well, know, I brought up. I've been watching Heather Summers' interview with, uh, with um, I can't even think of his name right now. It's not Mike, Mike. She said it is not going to help the farmers in her district at all. They're going to involve the tax <laughs> they did talk about having a provision for that, but that will probably come out of the commission that Brian spoke about, and that's what we have. No, we have nothing to do with that. It's now out of our hands, and I and I I will speak for myself. I, I think that Rep. Lanou is like-minded enough that I don't vote for bills if there's problems with one of them. We need to get it right. These impact lives and people and their and their families and their incomes and their towns. We need to get them right. 
If there's no reason to hurry these things through. Um, so I, if, I mean, we even see that happen in committee. Well, let's pass it out of committee and we'll fix it on the floor. Do you know how many times I've heard that? And they're not fixed on the floor. They get worse. And the same thing when they stay on the floor. Oh, well, let's pass it today. We'll fix it later. That's not how it works. That's not how it works. So I, I, you know, I'm committed to that as well. Again, there's just not enough of us that think that that's wrong. We think that's wrong. It's they know. It's like, I mean, I've like, stolen this in years, and now you hear this and you're going, oh my God. Let's get the local perspective here. I think, Kevin, you need to want to say Yeah, I think one of the worst ones was the cannabis bill, only because there's so many holes in it, it looks like a, a huge piece of Swiss cheese. There are so many unanswered questions in how do you do things. They haven't picked a committee yet, and they're going to pick it from the public sector and exclude the people that really need to get involved in it. Correct. Uh, the other thing, if you, if you don't think that this is how it relates, and we talked about this last time, how does it relate to support to uh, uh, find drugs if a person has was pulled over now and they may have had been sniffed for, for heroin and or marijuana, they have to drop that case because that dog would not be um, part of the evidence, so they couldn't do that. So if a, if, if a group of teenagers were speeding down the highway, and I think Brian spoke to this a little bit, and a police officer saw them and said, oh, geez, I'm going to pull them out. You have young teenagers in the car. They could have been drinking. They could have been just speeding down the road. They, he, he walks up to them and it's obvious there's, there's marijuana smoke and they've all, they're all high smoking marijuana. We have now allowed the opportunity for those children, children because they're teenagers, to just drive away. There's nothing that can be done. The police's hands are tied. They can't do anything. How, we have disabled our police in this state, and we're seeing it across the state. We're seeing crime all over. We had a there was an incident in Plainfield with a car stolen not too long ago. That's another problem that's going on. We had the clean slate law wiped away some very bad, very, very bad criminal offenses. Arguing on the floor for hours. Out. Back 25 years ago, you talked about the school, you talked about bad bills, the No Child Left Behind Act. Sounds great, doesn't it? All of our children aren't going to be left behind. What they did was they removed policies that safeguarded our kids in school so that they could bring the attendance numbers up. It didn't matter what condition those kids were going to school in. And the board's vets didn't care. The government didn't care. And they were getting a lot of money in the pounds. Because as you quoted in your last meeting here, Ms. Daphnius, it's about the money. It's not about the safety of our children. It's not about us. It's not about the elderly. It's about government corruption making a lot of money. They're not committees. They're people with personal interests that are voting so that they make money and their families make money and the hell with the rest of us. And that's the truth. So the truth is the Well, and we've yes. seen it over and over again. I know the that. Truth, the truth what they don't want put out. Right. And it's lack of transparency. It's self-serving. It is. It is. And I, I agree. I 100% agree with you. I did better than that on a high level. Well, the, the, pro, the challenge we have is the challenge that we have is that the media is not on our side either. Right. So you have to embarrass the wealthy. So we, we have to, to jump hoops to kind of get them to quote us, to hear us, to come well, and, and, and report what we're saying. Um, you, if you listen to the news, you hear all one-sided. You don't hear anything on the other side. It's all one-sided. Why? Because the media is with them. Yeah. It's money. Money, it's it's money and what power. What happens after your news? What happens during the news? You get a Pfizer commercial. You yeah. get this drug company, right. that drug company. Where's your news coming from? You walk to a store about okay. here and you see the ads and it, I mean, over the series. So I don't know if you have any more questions. Um, um, Representative Lanou and I both have cards over here. I know Kevin is willing to speak. I know it's 8.30 and it's late. I just have one more thing. Sure. Brian, I want to congratulate you on getting the bill passed for the camp for the children. Like I said, we're going to have to work together to get this done. Thank you. 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 I did not vote for that, so I will tell you why. And you can agree with me or disagree. I'm always willing to stand for. 
So there is a way that camps can get that information without a mandate. Can, but don't. And, and so there's been no incident in the state of Connecticut ever that you know of. That would know all the reports that I looked into. That so the church didn't have a lot of incidents until they were millions of people. So, so you can disagree with me, but I'm just saying this is where I stand. I always stand on the side of smaller government, less mandates, less regulation. There has been no reported cases at all that the bill was based on a, on a case that happened in Texas. And when I asked every single report, there were none that were overturned with anybody who had a, a background check that, that turned over something that revealed that they shouldn't have been um, camping. But that's, a, that, you know, we can talk about that offline, but I, I just wanted to say that you can get those names off the sex offender list. There's three lists that you can get those names off of. My All question, the camps that I spoke question, to. My question to you in this mm -hmm. is, do the camps that are state funded have to do that? Yes, they've had to but do that. the private ones do not, correct me? The private ones did not. So we're going to continue to allow the state to protect themselves, but then when the private ones, they don't have to. It's not about the safety of our children. It's about money and mm -hmm. shame on anybody who did not vote on that bill. I'm the only one that didn't vote on that bill. So just say, but I, again, I, I still support that. I still stand by that. I, there's ways of getting that information without putting a heavy regulation and mandate on camps. And that's where I stand. I always stand on the side of smaller government, less regulation. I know that the, the, the safety uh, steps smaller, are available to government them. means safeguard our children, safeguard our interests. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean safeguard the interests of business. So not trying to safeguard the, biz the businesses. I believe that also there's accountability on everybody to do their homework with regard to the camps that they send their children to. But uh, we can talk about that offline too. But any other questions? Well, I, I'll just end with, I just want to thank everybody for coming. Uh, I just want to uh, just put out there my, can anybody can reach me anytime. My home number is listed, it's 376-9354. Again, I'm going to start doing, in addition to that, you can call me anytime. Uh, my, uh, my direct email is out. It's brian.ladu at cga.ct.gov. And uh, again, I'm just doing office hours uh, starting uh, every the second and fourth uh, Mondays of the month at Slater Library. That's going to be starting September, Monday, September 13th. So uh, we'll be putting more out on that, but I welcome you guys anytime. And it was a really great discussion. I want to thank everybody for coming. Uh, Kevin, thank you for joining us, giving us a local perspective on uh, the state government, and um, we will, uh, I'm sure we'll talk soon. And we have more booklets up here, and we both have cards up here, and, and we'll be here to, I, I know I'll be here for a few minutes if you have any further questions, and thank you for coming. And we, I have to give up to Mr. Hallway.